So if I were uh, an advisor in Washington, yes, I would be saying to all kinds of people, be very, very cautious about your investment because you could be sitting on a disaster. Any U.S. warplane flying over a Syrian government-controlled area could now be shot down by Russia. Well, what's going to happen? Is this going to continue? Some stocks in America are turning into a bubble. Uh, the bubble's going to come, then it's going to collapse. You should be very worried. The average length of time for a downturn to occur between one downturn and the next is four to seven years. Okay, we'll do the math. The last major downturn we had, 2008, 2009, four to seven years means we're kind of due for one. So long as the hype is believed, they have to participate in it to make the money. The trick is to get out before the reverse begins to happen. And when that happens, when the foreigners or the domestics who begin to get frightened about Mr. Trump not delivering, well, then you could see that kind of withdrawal become a spiral, a self-reinforcing spiral. And then you see the kind of literal collapse that we had, for example, in the last four months of 2008, when the stock market just went into a complete tailspin and trillions were lost in a matter of weeks. U.S. pilots flying over Syria now on the lookout for Russian airplanes or missile threats following the weekend shootdown by a U.S. Navy FNA-18 Super Hornet of a Syrian warplane. This because the Kremlin threatened that any U.S. warplane operating in certain areas of Syria would be considered a threat. The U.S. decided to send its B-52 bombers to Europe. They went to join NATO drills and to patrol the seas bordering Russia. NATO was created as a Cold War instrument to fight against the Soviet Union and the so-called Warsaw Pact, neither of which exist now, but NATO still does. This raises the question, why? And there is only one answer. Whatever else anyone says, it's an instrument of U.S. foreign policy. The U.S. asks its allies to increase military spending and at the same time says that NATO is not intending to attack anyone. But if you are not attacking anyone, why would you increase military spending? Well, what's going to happen? Is this going to continue? Some stocks in America are turning into a bubble. Uh, the bubble's going to come, then it's going to collapse. You should be very worried. So when is this going to happen? Later this year or next. Later this year or next. Write it down. Later this year or next. Later this year or next. Write it down. And what will trigger it? Well, it's interesting because these things always start where we're not looking. It could be some country we're not watching. It could be all sorts of things. Uh, it could be war. How big a crash could we be looking at? It's going to be the worst in your lifetime. This year, our nuclear forces will receive more than 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of penetrating all existing missile defenses, even the most advanced. The U.S. has sent ships and planes very near the islands, sometimes drawing Chinese warnings. Oh, this is the Chinese Navy, this is the Chinese Navy, please go away quickly. Tonight, a government-run Chinese newspaper is warning of a possible war with the U.S. over the man-made islands. It's spurred by this comment from Secretary of State nominee Rex Tillerson at his confirmation hearings. We are going to have to send China a clear signal that, that first, the island building stops, and second, your access to those islands is also not going to be allowed. The Chinese newspaper says, quote, unless Washington plans to wage a large-scale war in the South China Sea, then trying to block China's access to the islands would be, quote, foolish. And Tillerson had better bone up on nuclear power strategies if he wants to force a big nuclear power to withdraw from its own territories. America has military ties with almost everyone in the region, effectively surrounding Beijing with pro-U.S. forces. On grand display in the Chinese capital, new weapons, which U.S. officials believe are designed specifically to target U.S. military assets. 
a new ballistic missile with the range to strike the U.S. naval base at Guam, earning it the nickname the Guam Killer. A new anti-ship ballistic missile, which analysts call the Carrier Killer, unveiled today for the first time. And high above, a flyover by China's new J-15 fighter, soon to be deployed on China's own new aircraft carrier, its first. All this today watched not just by China's elite, but Russian President Vladimir Putin. A Chinese company produced this video, showing a Chinese attack on forces very much resembling American ones, with an overwhelming Chinese victory. conflict in North Korea, John, would be probably uh, the worst uh, kind of fighting in most people's lifetimes. This latest test shows an increasingly bold North Korea, defying repeated warnings from the U.S. and its allies. It comes as we're seeing new images of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that were released over the weekends. With tensions already high in the region, North Korea launched yet another missile, its third test in three weeks. The latest, according to U.S. officials, a short-range ballistic missile flying for six minutes and nearly 250 miles before crashing into the Sea of Japan. The North Korean regime has hundreds of artillery cannons and rocket launchers within range of one of the most densely populated cities on Earth, which is the capital of South Korea. Today, the old duck and cover films from Cold War days seem campy and quaint. To many, a nuclear blast and its resultant electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, seems so unimaginable, so unlikely, that few worry about it, and fewer still take any precautions. It's not real, uh, and it's something out of a James Bond movie. The general consensus is that it's, it is not a real threat. It's not imminent by any stretch of the imagination. Tell that to Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, who heads Congress's EMP commission. We have information, for example, the data from actual high-altitude nuclear detonations that were conducted by us and the Russians back in the 1961-62 time, time frame that not, did things like knock the lights out in Hawaii. An EMP is a short burst of electromagnetic energy that all nuclear explosions produce to varying degrees. A large EMP triggered over the United States from an orbiting nuke at the right altitude could fry the circuitry of cell phones, render electronic banking, automobile computers, railways, air traffic control, and airplanes themselves useless. Food would rot in refrigerators and in farm fields with no means of transporting agri-products to population centers. In the following weeks and months, a truly Mad Max world would evolve. Dr. Pry believes a naivete about EMP pervades the Western democracies, where nukes are kept mostly out of sight and out of mind. But for totalitarian and authoritarian states, as in the case of Iran, and possibly North Korea, uh, the use of nuclear weapons is not only unthinkable, but in their open source military doctrine you know they've written for years about being able to win a nuclear war that you can fight a nuclear war adding to emp worries north korea's recent successful test of a solid fueled ballistic missile the solid fuel needs less preparation meaning less warning time for those targeted in addition north korea also has at least two observation satellites that orbit over the u.s at an altitude ideal for an emp attack It is becoming, becoming almost a weekly exercise, and tonight we are again confronted with a North Korean missile test, one that could bring the communist regime closer to its goal of attaining a nuclear weapon. At this time, uh, what we know I'd prefer to keep uh, silent about because we may actually know some things the North Koreans don't even know. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night. 
In the past few weeks, the Pentagon has doubled its firepower in the region. The USS Ronald Reagan strike group deployed from Japan, joining the Carl Vinson in the region, giving American commanders two aircraft carriers and more warships capable of launching cruise missiles. And James, the Pentagon is conducting a missile test of its own tomorrow. The Missile Defense Agency will launch an intercontinental ballistic missile from the Marshall Islands in the Pacific into space and attempt to shoot it down with an interceptor missile from a base in California.